In problem 3.1, we have SDJ Inc. with networking capital of 1920, current liabilities of 4380, and inventory of 3750. What is the current ratio? What is the quick ratio? So a very simple problem here. Our equation is current ratios, current assets off, uh, divided by current liabilities off the balance sheet. Uh, quick ratio is current assets minus inventory over current liabilities. We want to see how liquid this company is. Uh, inventory not very liquid. And we're going to need to find current assets. So we need the equation networking capital equals current assets minus current liabilities. So our solution, the uh, current assets are our uh, networking capital of 1920 plus our current liabilities of 4380. And that gives us a current asset value of 6300. Now we're going to use that in the other two equations. Uh, current ratios, current assets over current liabilities. So we're going to take our 6300 of current assets divided by current liabilities of 4380, and we get a current ratio of 1.4384 times. 1.4384 times. And um, quick ratios, current assets minus inventory, so 6300 minus our 3750 of inventory divided by current liabilities of 4380. And for the quick ratio, we get uh, 0. 5822 times. And there are your answers for problem number one. In problem 3.2, we have Shelton Incorporated with sales of 17.5 million, assets of 13.1 million, and total debt of 5.7 million. Profit margin or net return on sales for them is 6%. What's their net income or NPAT? What is their percent net return on assets? And what's their net return on equity? A couple of equations we need to solve these. First, we need net income in several of these equations. So net income is our profit margin times our sales figure. Uh, we're also going to need uh, the balance sheet equation, equity equaling assets minus debt, just transforming um, total liabilities plus equity equals total assets, just moving that to the other side to get our equity number. We're going to need that. And then net return on assets is net income over assets. Net return on equity is net income over equity. Net return on anything being net income over anything. So our solution to get our net income first, because we're going to use it in these two equations, um, we take the 6% profit margin or net return on sales times 17.5 million of sales, and we get a million and fifty thousand dollars for our net income. We're going to use that number uh, here and here when we calculate NROA and NROE. So our net return on assets is a million and fifty thousand divided by total assets of $13.1 million. And if I do that division, I get the answer 8.0153% for my NROA. <clears throat> for my NROE net return on equity, I take my net income over my equity. Equity would then be assets of $13.1 million minus my debt of $5.7 million. I get a net return on equity of 14 0.1892%. And there are your answers to problem number two. In problem 3.3, we have Aguilera Corporation with accounts receivable of $438,720, credit sales of $5,173,820. What's their uh, receivable turnover and what are their day sales outstanding? Uh, equation is receivable is turnover, is just sales over accounts receivable. In general, anything turnover is sales over anything, one exception being inventory turnover. But in this case, it's receivables turnover, so it's sales over receivables. And um, day sales outstanding are simply 365 off uh, divided by the receivable turnover number you calculated above. So receivables turnover simply 5173820. And sales divided by 438720 of accounts receivable. And I get 11.7930 times. I strung that out to about eight decimal places. Uh, you can get more exact with your days, your minutes, your seconds, if you want to go to that level of detail. And then uh, to get day sales outstanding, I take my 365 days divided by 11.7929 uh, times. And I get a day sales outstanding of 30 point nine five days <clears throat> and so the answer is then uh, the um, it takes the company Aguilar Corporation uh, 30.95 days to uh, collect their receivables off their customers here's your answer to problem number three in 
problem number four, we have Green Corp with inventory of $417,381. Uh, cost of goods sold of $4,682,715. Uh, what's their inventory turnover and what is their day sales and inventory? Inventory turnover takes exception to that general uh, rule we used in the last problem. Uh, anything turnover, sales over anything. The, the exception is inventory turnover, which is cost of goods sold off the income statement, divide by inventory off the balance sheet. And to get day sales and inventory, how many days our inventory sits on our shelf, we take 365 divided by that inventory turnover number we calculate above. Um, so inventory turnover simply 4,682,715 of cost of goods sold divided by 417,381 of inventory. And I get an answer of 11.21928166 times 11.22 times my inventory turns every year. And then day sales, how many days are sitting on the shelf? I take 365 days divided by <clears throat> the uh, inventory turnover, 11.22 times, and I get a, an answer of 32.53 days on average that my inventory is sitting on the shelf. And there's your answer to problem number four. In problem 3.5, we see that Levine Incorporated has total debt ratio of 0.53. What is their debt to equity ratio and what is their equity multiplier? Now, you're not really given a lot in this uh, problem, so you're going to have to find some things out. Um, our debt ratio of 0.53 is equal to total debt divided by total assets. We know that total assets are the same as debt plus equity. So we could pose this as being debt divided by debt plus equity if we wanted to. Uh, we know our total assets, uh, if they are 1 or 100 percent, uh, we have total debt of 53 percent, which is given. That would mean our total equity is 47 percent if we drew total assets as a total pie chart. So we use these numbers to solve this problem. Uh, to get debt divided by equity, I simply take uh, 0.53 divided by equity of 0.47, and I get 1.12765957 times as a debt to equity ratio. Uh, for equity multiplier, we know it's assets over equity, so I take my assets from up above here of uh, 1 or 100%, and I divide by my total equity figure of 0.47, and I get 2.12765957 times. And if we compare these two numbers, we see very simply that um, your equity multiplier is simply 1 plus debt to equity. And there you have the answer to problem number five. In problem number six, we have Makers Corp with additions to retain earnings of $395,000, dividends of $195,000, equity of $5.3 million, shares outstanding of 170,000 shares, stock sells for $64 a share, and sales are at $5.15 million. And this one, uh, we're given a lot of givens and we're asked for a lot of equations and answers. So they want to know what, uh, what is the earnings, what are earnings per share, dividends per share, market to book, PE ratio, and price to sales ratio. So I listed the equations and then I did the solutions out to the right here because there are so many requests here. <clears throat> earnings per share simply net income divided by shares, but I don't have net income. I don't have net income in the givens. So I love this given equation solution model taught to me by a physics professor because it forces you to ask the question, do I have each of the components I need in the equation? Uh, answer is no, so I need to calculate net income. So I did that down here uh, first to get earnings per share. Earnings is the same thing as net income, so I, I need to take my additions to retain earnings and my dividends, add them together. Those are the two things that make up uh, net income or NPAT for earnings. So I take 395000 plus uh, 195000 and I get net income of 590,000. Now I can do my net income per share, or earnings per share. I take 590,000, divide by 170,000 shares that was given, and I get $3.47 per share. <clears throat> Again, I could string that out to eight decimal places uh, should I desire. Uh, dividends per share are simply my dividends of 195,000 divided by 170,000 shares, and for this I get a dollar fifteen, approximately dollar fourteen seven per share. Um, 
book value per share. Book value is the same thing as total equity. So I need to uh, plug in my equity and shares outstanding. I get my equity uh, up here of $5.3 million divided by 170,000 shares. And I get a book value per share of $31 and almost 18 cents per share. Uh, market to book ratio is market value or market price per share, which is given divided by book value per share, which I just calculated. So I can plug that in right there. Uh, $64 per share divided by 31.17 per share in um, book value per share, and I get a market to book ratio of 2.053 times. Dollars divided by dollars gives me units of times. Units are very important. Notice I have units listed on all of these equations and answers. Price uh, equity uh, PE ratio is price per share divided by earnings per share. PE ratio, price per share divided by earnings per share. So I take $64 per share, which was given, and then I take my uh, $3.47 per share that I calculated for earnings per share, put that in the denominator, and I get a PE ratio of 18.4 for one times. 18.441 times. Again, I'm dividing dollars by dollars to, to get an answer of times. And the price to sales ratio is price per share, $64 divided by sales per share, which I take by, ta get by taking my sales of 5.15 uh, million, 5, 5 million, 5150 divided by 170,000 shares, and I get an answer uh, price to sales ratio of 2.113 times, 2.11262, 2.113 times. There are your answers to problem number six. For problem number seven, we have Roten Reuters with equity multiplier of 1.15 times, total asset turnover of 2.1 times, and a profit margin or net return on sales, as I like to put it, of 6.1%. What is their percent return on equity uh, formula using the DuPont identity? which is what we'll have to use on this one, is uh, percent return on equity broken into its three components of profit margin times total asset turnover times equity multiplier. <clears throat> so for solution, we simply plug in profit margin of 0.061 from the givens, total asset turnover of 2.1 from the givens, and equity multiplier of 1.15 times from the givens. And for this, I get a return on equity of 14.73%. And there is your answer to problem number seven. In problem 3.8, we have Zombie Corporation with profit margin of 5.1%, total asset turnover of 1.95 times, percent return on equity of 16.15%. What is their debt to equity ratio the author would like to know? So again, using the DuPont identity, breaking ROE down into its three components, profit margin times total asset turnover times equity multiplier, I can simply start plugging in ROE, I plug in 0.1615, profit margin I'm going to plug in 0.051, and total asset turnover I'm going to plug in 1.95 times, uh, times the equity multiplier, which is unknown, solving for equity multiplier, I get, uh, the, dividing those numbers out, bringing these numbers to the other side, I get 1.62393162.4 times, I love numbers, so I like to uh, uh, calculate that out to about eight decimal places, or nine or ten. Uh, I can round that back to 1.62 times. And uh, debt to equity is simply equity multiplier minus 1, as we said earlier. So I just take 1 off of that answer, and I get a, a debt to equity ratio of 0 0.62 times. And there's your answer to problem number 8.